In the mid-1980s, the Transformers' main rivals on toy store shelves in America were the GoBots, a competing line of transforming robots released by Tonka. Much like Hasbro had done with Transformers, Tonka had created the GoBots by importing and rebranding a Japanese toy line, Machine Robo, produced by Bandai. And while the series was never as big a hit as Transformers, it was still a great success. So soon, Tonka and Bandai were working together to create the next great innovation in transforming toys. Powerful living rocks. These are the basics on Rock Lords. Rock Lords was a toy line co-developed by Tonka and Bandai, released in 1986. Rather than transforming into vehicles or animals, each figure in this series converted into a different kind of rock. The characters were aliens from the planet Cortex, who had once been flesh and blood until a mysterious cataclysm had fused all life on the planet with rocks. The main line consisted of 12 figures, each of which came with a mini-comic and a character profile card divided evenly into the forces of good led by the heroic Boulder and the evil rock lords led by Magmar. Other toys in the series included a pair of vehicles the figures could ride in, the Rockosaurs, rocks that converted into dinosaur-like creatures, and the Rock Gnarlies, the rock lords' non-transforming animal companions with rooted hair. A playset of the fortress Stonehead was designed and advertised, but was never released. As Rock Lords was being developed, work was also underway on a movie based on the Challenge of the Gobots cartoon, which would serve as a springboard to introduce the new toy line to kids. An early treatment for the film included the Rock Lords in a supporting role in a larger Gobot adventure, but the story was soon overhauled to make The Rocks the main event. Released to theatres in March 1986, Gobots Battle of the Rock Lords featured the voices of B-list celebrities of the day like Margot Kidder, Roddy McDowell and Telly Savalas, and saw Boulder and his forces recruit the aid of the Gobots in their fight to stop Magmar conquering Cortex and acquiring its ultimate weapon. The relationship between the two series would continue beyond the film, with the Rock Lords appearing in comic strips published in the mail-order Gobots magazine. But Tonka chose to market the toys themselves as their own standalone line, with no mention of the Gobots in the adverts or on the packaging. But this was just in America. Rock Lords was notable for how differently the series and its characters were handled in other countries around the world. In both Europe and Australia, where the toys were distributed by Bandai, the line was actively marketed as a spin-off. A new story was even conceived for the Australian market, told through a promotional mini-comic that reimagined the Rock Lords as creatures from deep within the Earth, awakened by a nuclear bomb. Things were even more different in Japan, where Bandai opted to sell the toys as part of their Machine Robo series. This led to them being featured in an entirely different fictional context in the 1986 Machine Robo animated series, Revenge of Kronos. In this series, the characters were known as the Rock People, who, like all Machine Robo, were mechanical beings from the planet Kronos, some of whom had allied themselves with the series' villains, the evil alien invaders, the Gyandra. Rock Lords proved a success, outselling Gobots for the year, and the line continued into 1987. This year's smaller assortment introduced five new Rock Lords, including the heroic Jewel Lords made of translucent plastic, new Gnarlies, plus the larger motorized Snarly Gnarly, and the Shock Rocks, Rock Lords with action features like friction motors and flip-out auto transformations. A combining figure called the Fossilsaurus, made up of four Rock Lords who merged into a large dinosaur skeleton, was planned for release this year, but cancelled. However, a retooled, recolored version of the figure was available in Japan and Europe. No new tie-in media was created in the US, but the Rock Lords did continue to appear on TV in other countries. 
in Japan, they again featured in this year's new machine robo anime, Battle Hackers. While in France, Revenge of Kronos was imported and dubbed as Revenge of the Gobots, with two episodes even being released on VHS with Rock Lords branding. The Rock Lords had one further unusual animated adventure in the obscure French cartoon Blue, Child of the Earth, which followed the adventures of a being named Blue fighting evil on post-apocalyptic Earth. Reportedly, when work on this series began in 1986, production company IDDH had a deal with Bandai that resulted in the Rock Lords being included in the series, depicted as tiny beings native to future Earth. Unfortunately, Blue had a troubled production, and it wouldn't actually make it to the air until 1990. But by that point, Rock Lords was long over. 1987 proved to be the end of the road for the Rock Lords. Sales fell off, and like so many other short-lived 80s toy lines, it was cancelled without fanfare. Generally speaking, while it does have its fans, the line isn't one of the most fondly remembered 80s properties, historically seen as one of the odder attempts to capitalise on the era's transforming robot craze, built on what seems like a fundamentally very strange idea for a toy. But while in hindsight it might be difficult to understand why anyone ever thought toys that turned into rocks was a good idea, Rock Lords wasn't actually unique. There was a bit of a trend of transforming rocks going on in 1986, with Rock Lords just being the biggest, most famous example. Similar figures were released that year in both Mattel's Masters of the Universe and Hasbro's Inhumanoids lines. Transformers, on the other hand, stayed away from the concept. There were plans to depict the inhabitants of the planet Lithone, seen in that year's The Transformers the Movie as a race of rock robots, but the idea was abandoned. And you do have to kind of wonder if the decision to drop it was made to avoid it looking like Transformers was copying its rival. Whether that was the case or not, Living Rocks did appear in Transformers media over in Japan, where an episode of the 1987 cartoon The Headmasters featured rock beings from the planet Daira that could merge together into larger creatures. The stories of the robots in disguise and the powerful living rocks became more closely intertwined in 1990, when the failing Tonka was acquired by Hasbro, meaning that the creators of the Transformers now held the rights to the names and likenesses of the Rock Lords. They didn't do anything with them for a very long time, but in the 21st century, little by little, references started to appear in Transformers media. In 2009, the Transformers animated cartoon featured a race of huge rock monsters that could change shape to disguise themselves as asteroids. They weren't actively designed as an homage, but the 2010 AllSpark Almanac guidebook identified these beasts as a species of rock lord from Cortex. Then, in 2011, the name Boulder was dusted off for the preschool Transformers series Rescue Bots, in which it was used for a gentle, nature-loving Autobot engineer. In 2012, a few actual Rock Lords characters made a tiny crowd scene cameo in the Transformers Robots in Disguise comic book. Then, in 2016, the Transformers Collectors Club's GoBots-themed Facebook feature, Renegade Rhetoric, told several new short stories about the Rock Lords, continuing on from where the movie had left off. And then, in 2018, Transformers comic publisher IDW Publishing released a brand new GoBots comic book in which the Rock Lords played a small supporting role. This series reimagined them as a race that had evolved on far future Earth, who spent their days in meditation, seeking to achieve a state of oneness with the planet. Deeply connected to the Earth and able to control its very substance, they used their power over rocks and stone to help the Guardian Gobots defeat the Gobotic monster, Zod. 
Most recently, in 2024, the Transformers Legacy toy line introduced the Armorizers, rock robots that transformed into rocky vehicles, who could also disassemble and convert into weapons and armor for other figures. Hasbro's designers have talked about how these toys draw inspiration from the various living rocks of the past, including the Rock Lords, the Dyra rock creatures, and even the Inhumanoids. You see, in Legacy's multiversal storyline, the Armorizers are said to come from the Infernak universe, named after a fiery kingdom at the centre of the Earth seen in Inhumanoids. The chances of a full-scale Rock Lords revival seem pretty slim, so for now, homages like this are as close as we're likely to get to a return to the Stone Age of the 80s, and that one brief moment when rocks ruled the world. And those are the basics on Rock Lords. Were you a fan back in the day? How do you think the Armorizers stack up next to the originals? Rock the vote down in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for lots more history and lore from the world of the Transformers and other related series like this. Plus, you can watch every episode early and ad-free on Patreon.